A da li u tom slučaju stanovništvo treba da ide u skloništu? Should people be moved to the shelters? Mm, they are safe. They can stay in their homes. Stanovništvo je bezbjedno. Každa mogu ostati u svojim stanovima. The base is full. No one can come inside. Translate. Ljudi, baza je puna. Niko više ne može ući u bazu. A opičko materno. Serbian soldiers are inside the base. What? Vesme, možeš mu povesti moje sinove iz baze, molim te. Ajde da ubit će i Srbi ako i nađu. Ispituj muškarce i ubijaj tu 200 metara od baze. Dođi malo da se družimo. E to mi je bila profa u srednjoj. A gdje je Hamdija? Ajde, odmah. Sino, bit će dobro. We must speak to you. They are killing people outside. Skarci, lijevo, žede, desno. Ajmo, obržaj! Franklin, I beg you, don't send them out there. Aida, zdjevi ga, prekriže ih. Let them stay. Hamdija! Eme! Ja, einen ganz schönen guten Abend wünsche ich allen. Ähm, Good evening, everybody. This was a short trailer for the film Kovadis Aida of the Bosnian um, director Drasmila Spanic. I would like to welcome you very warmly to a talk with the Bosnian director and um, representatives of the German parliament. First of all, let me introduce Mrs. Spanic and just a few comments. You have the possibility of uh, listening in English. go to the button dolmetschen and then you can follow in English. Thanks a lot. So, Yasmila Spanic. Um, um, she, uh, Jasmila Spanic. <clears throat> well, it is a special honor for me to welcome you tonight. And um, she was born in 1974 and she studied performing arts in Sarajevo. She is an actress. She went to the US and she shot a film there and she had her debut with Grudavica in Secret in German and um, it was also um, awarded at the Film Festival in Berlin and it received many awards like the Film Fest München Film Prize of the German film and uh, the current film is uh, also nominated and it was um, for the Golden Lion. She was invited to Venice and Best Foreign Film nominated for the Oscar Award this year. Miss Spanish is also in the international jury of the Film Festspiele Berlin, Film Festival Berlin. And she is also in uh, the um, movement uh, Europe 1925. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. And in alphabetical order, I would like to introduce the members of parliament who joined us today, Renata Alt, and she was born in the then um, Czechoslovakia. She was a chemical engineer. And since 2017, she has been in the German parliament. She was in the foreign trade ministry in Prague and um, uh, attache in Munich. And now she is uh, on a committee. She's a rapporteur also for the run up to the elections. And uh, she's also in um, conflict resolution and uh, integrated actions. Welcome. And I would also like to welcome Josef Juratovic. Since 2005, he has been a 
um, member of parliament for the SPD, and she's an expert on Southeast Europe. And he was born in Croatia. He was an integration expert of the SPD group in the parliament. And he is the vice president of the Southeast Europe Society and also in the parliamentary group. Mr. Juratovic, a warm welcome to you. It is a special pleasure for me always to welcome Manuel Sarrazin. Since 2008, he has been a member of parliament for Bündnis 90 Die Grünen, and he's also the president of the Southeast Europe Society. And he's an expert on Southeast Europe policy. And he's also on the Foreign Committee. And uh, welcome. And last but not least, I would like to welcome Christian Schmidt. Since 1990, he has been a member of the German Bundestag. And from 2005 to 2013, he has um, been in the Ministry for Defense and then um, Minister for Food and Agriculture. And well, a few weeks ago, he has been designated as the High Representative for Bosnia and Herzegovina. Thank you very much for your time and your interest. It is a special um, honor for us to have you here. My name is Adelheid Wölfel. I'm the Southeast Europe correspondent of Der Standard, and I live in Sarajevo. I would like to thank you very warmly the Southeast Europe uh, Society. Thank you for inviting me to be a moderator tonight because it is a very important event personally. It is about people, about humans who lost their loved ones due to a terrible ideology during the 90s. Their homes were destroyed and um, their belongings and their families. And this because uh, too many responsible persons looked away and um, survivors, uh, surviving wives of uh, the men, I. Um, talk to them and nothing has impressed me more than these uh, survivors because they still have the power to um, be in rage. Uh, um, they are like um, women. She told me, one of them told me she has 200 euros per month and uh, she has a small allotment where she grows vegetable and um, there's hardly any regular employment for these survivors and it is especially it is specifically because of these people that the film is shown and has to be shown well in this context miss spanish i would ask you to tell us something about your film and what was your motivation it is the story about a woman who is uh, trying to save her sons and her husband from the genocide. She doesn't succeed, she fights, but nonetheless, her husband and her sons are murdered by the troops of General Mladic. And maybe you can tell us a bit about the reactions to this film in Serbia. Uh, it uh, is not shown, but uh, a, an actress has been selected, Jasna Trujic, and she is from Serbia. So maybe you can tell us something about your perspective on the film. You have the floor. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for organizing this event. It was my big wish to show it uh, to Bundestag. And one of the reasons is that I live between uh, Berlin and Sarajevo, and I believe we have uh, more things in common than they are developed. Um, somehow I really wish that um, Germany, especially now with high representative, uh, nice to meet you, uh, has a more sensible approach to Bosnia because certain things that for uh, Germany make sense doesn't make sense in Bosnia. And one of the reasons is 
uh, shown in this film, um, because we are deeply, deeply traumatized society. Uh, still 1000 bodies from Srebrenica boys are missing. Uh, people still don't know, mothers are still trying to find and bury their sons after 26 years. And there is this pain that doesn't allow you know, country to progress in a way and in, in a certain and, and, and healthy way, especially with so much denial, so much right wing forces that are going. But I will talk later about my very optimistic and positive approach towards Bosnia and the region. For now, I will talk about things that we have to get rid of and move on. So I decided when uh, we started making the film that Srebrenica, because it's such a political and very, very heavy subject, um, I don't want to, I didn't want uh, to be in media at all. I didn't give any interview for two years. I didn't announce that I will make a film because I knew that every political party can use film and me in order to promote their agendas towards Srebrenica. So we finished the film in silence with a lot, a lot of obstacles. Um, but I mean, political, financial, a lot of them, but we overcame, overcome everything because so many people wanted to, to this film to be made. We have nine European countries as um, uh, co-producers, Germany including. Uh, we have wonderful co-producers from Germany who were really not just giving money, but really trying so hard that this film is made because everybody felt it's more than a film. Um, when we, you know, when I decided for casting, uh, I'm treating um, ex-Yugoslavia as my um, cultural territory and I'm always choosing actresses and actors who are speaking my language as um, a totally equal. So um, in my first film, Grbavica, that, that one in Golden Bear, I had Mirena Karanovic from Belgrade and this time I found not for any other purpose but for that this was the best actress, Jasna Đuricic from Novi Sad. And Mladic is played by Boris Isakovic, who is uh, her husband. Um, but uh, these two people are just the best people for this role. And they knew that with Grbavica, with my first film, with Esma's Secret, um, there was a lot of um, um, terrible media and political um, attention and backlash for Mirjana Karanovic for my first film. They called her Serbian traitor, they uh, were showing on the first pages of these right-wing magazines that people should not uh, give her jobs, that she should get out of Serbia. They knew all of this because they are Mirjana's friends uh, and they decided to uh, say yes to this film, knowing that uh, many, many bad things can come. So I find them incredibly brave and uh, progressive. They always say, no, we are just you know, we, we are actors and we have to do beautiful scripts and, and roles. Uh, but I think they are they are really incredibly uh, brave people. So when we decided to uh, shoot the film, we were keeping it in silence. And when film is out at the Venice uh, Film Festival, right wing uh, magazines from uh, Serbia, though didn't they didn't see the film because it was uh, they they published the article on the same day when the film premiered, and they were not in Venice. We we checked who is there. Um, they said that film is anti-Serbian, and two people that were uh, talking about a film were two war criminals, one of them Shlivanchanin, who is sentenced in Den Hague. And I realized the mechanism. Um, you know, these political, these political forces that remain from the war and that are very present, both in Serbia and Republika Srpska, they're trying to uh, put, the, they're trying to put their people in a trap that people feel like they committed a crime. They gave them their guilt. And that's how they are keeping them under, under uh, you know, in prison. And I was thinking how to make premiere and how to break this narrative. And we decided to make a screening for only for young people, for young people who are born after genocide. So they have nothing to do with Srebrenica. Um, doesn't matter if they are Serbs, they are Croats, they are, they are uh, Bosnian Muslims, it doesn't matter. They, are, uh, they have nothing to do. They, they are not victims because they are coming from Bosnian side. They are not perpetrators because they are coming from Serbian side. So we had 100 people because it was um, a Corona pandemic in October. And uh, we had really beautiful screening. I told them, you 
uh, you know, you have to emancipate from the narratives. You have to know what happened, you know, not deny, not lie. You have to know what happened and look at it in order to move on. And this approach, I talked to these people and uh, it was so beautiful because first person that um, uh, was asking to say something was from Republika Srpska, young man, 20 something. And he said he cried through the whole film. And I was thinking, look, he, he was raised in a, a situation where he had always this media narrative that um, Srebrenica, that never, genocide never happened, uh, that others are guilty of everything. And he was able to, uh, to, to cry for others. And I felt that that is the way to go on. You know, there are, I, I'm receiving a lot of emails from young people saying, I knew all my life that narrative about Srebrenica had something wrong. I didn't know what was it, but when I saw, uh, when I've seen your film, I realized why I felt so strange. And many people from Serbia, from Republika Srpska are saying, thank you because I had catharsic uh, feeling and I, I felt, purified after the film, because now I know wh why these things are happening. And media in Serbia really, uh, I mean, I'm talking about this um, other than, than right wing, the right wing are always talking the same stuff, um, repeating the same things, but others were very respectful and they were uh, asking for many interviews and they are really, uh, 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 you know, publishing a lot of good things and many people saw the film through VOD platform. Unfortunately, no distributor or cinema owner was um, brave enough to show the film in, in cinema, but uh, because of um, uh, Corona, we, we all developed this new way of distribution through internet. So luckily the censorship was over, uh, we, we, we overcome the censorship and a uh, lot of uh, Serbian people saw the film. So I noticed that these little cracks in, um, in a wall uh, between us are possible. And that is my, aim and my my only you know award for 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 this of course i know i want to people to know about srebrenica uh, because i think it is european shame it is world uh, you know mistake and in order to improve our institutions and also to show how easy it is to slip from normal life into something unimaginable I can talk thank more, you. but maybe I should. <laughs> thank you, thank you, vielmals, for Spanish, for these einführenden uh, Worte über Ihren Film. Thank you very, very much for this introductory words uh, to the film. Now I'd like to ask the members of Parliament for their thoughts on that. Miss um, Kuvade Zaida shows the uh, political responsible people. Uh, there was the Netherlands, the Dutch blue helmets at the time who were supposed to protect the population. It was a safe area and they didn't fulfill their jobs. Um, so they could have done that if there had been more engagement and commitment. So what do you think are the political lessons to be learned here, especially if we look at foreign policy engagement of Germany, Ms. Alt. First, I'd like to thank Ms. Zanich for this incredible piece of work that she has created, because that was something that was really missing. I have been watching the when I visit the Western Balkans and we have done a couple of trips there together with my colleague uh, Juratovic, as he is the, as I'm the chair of the Southeast group in the parliament. We have seen the consequence this drama had in Trabinica, uh, Srebrenica and how emotionally charged many regions still are of ex Yugoslavia and uh, how difficult it is for many people, especially for the women, to handle this drama. 
it is even more important, therefore, that this film is made in such an impressive and disturbing way, showing what happened at the time and this failure of the West. I in in 2018, I was on a business uh, trip to Serbia and I've talked to the Prime Minister Benabovic at the point when just a few days before I had arrived that uh, they said that they deny this genocide. I was then asked to, on behalf of the Federal Republic, as I'm the first German guest, to immediately protest that we are not uh, going to accept this type of uh, statement by a prime minister. And this is exactly what you have pointed out in your introduction that many people until today deny this genocide. And this is why it's even more important to show up everything that has happened. I personally, at that point in time, I was in Munich and we had very intensive discussions with the colleagues in the, of the countries of the Western Balkans again and again, seeing how desperate they were and the, everybody is sympathetic with these uh, people subject to these tragedies and this is why i'm so um saddened by miss uh quote we would have to say if sabrinica would have to say again happen again the eu wouldn't raise a finger again and this has to be really a warning signal for the west and for us we are in times where we lead negotiations to join the EU with many parts uh, of the Balkan, of the Western Balkan. And this kind of quote shows that the people in these countries are by no way uh, they feel taken seriously and represented by the EU. And this type of tragedy must never repeat on European soil. And I, can say this is really a uh, memorial, the bombed quarters that have been, uh, that are shown by the politicians saying, look, this is what NATO did to us. And that is uh, not taken away deliberately to um, keep these NATO airstrikes alive in the memory. But I have, talked a lot to our FTP friend and our former foreign minister, Klaus, Kinister, uh, Klaus Kinkel, who used to be foreign minister at the time. I exchanged a lot with him. He was um, the person who signed my diplomatic accreditation when I was sent to Germany. And I have to say that until the end of his life, he suffered from this. He always said, that at night he wakes up uh, in sweat with the challenges. Why didn't we see it earlier on? Why didn't we see? Uh, he was he personally saw these mass graves, and uh, when he visited the regions, and this is why this will stay with me. His desperation that from the day on when he saw is um, haunted him and this is why it is for me an important appeal, appeal in foreign policies that we have to undertake everything possible in order to support any country that has an ethnic conflict on the West Balkan and solve it. Of course, the countries have to solve their conflicts themselves. It is incredible, but we have to support them. And I know that in the UN, a lot of resolutions were passed. Uh, it was learned from the situation, but this is something that must by no way repeat. And the denial of the genocide is something that we cannot accept. 
Thank you, Mrs. Alt, for this contribution. Mrs. Mr. Yurotovich, there's many people who fled to Germany during the war and during the Croatian war as well, and they all have brought their political and personal experience to Germany. Do you think this film contributes to this story and the history that these people have who came here to Germany have, is that a story of all Europeans, do you think? Yes, first of all, thank you very much. Ms. Uh, Spanic has said it very wonderfully, very objectively without prejudice, prejudice but in the film, I see an interplay um, that opens many, many questions. First of all, it was a political failure. It was a human failure. And also the military discipline and uh, the uh, inability of the UN soldiers on site we all know that many questions are still open. Did the international community know what could have happened? Know what could have happened? Uh, it, maybe it couldn't foresee the massacre, but the way how this war was led in Bosnia-Herzegovina, um, only that uh, snipers killed over 2,000 children there. They, it could have been known what the military was capable to do. And I think there are many questions that we really have to address politically on site and also here in Europe. And also which role we will take in future situations comparable to this. What is very important for me on site uh, uh, there is the buildup of democracy and the review of the history. Bosnia Herzegovina, uh, uh, um, I fear these cruelties that were done there, by the way, by people who used to live in Yugoslavia. Uh, and they have known this country, the new generation that is growing up simply by the history that's being told. We have to know every nationality. Kids are trained in nationalism. And what we could, what can come up now can be much more brutal than what we have seen in the past. So that means we have to ask for the lessons that we were able to take from this and how can we act. And it's very important that we, in the future, uh, Mr. Schmidt is probably going to say something about that, but it's not him alone, it's the European community as well. Um, I think the point why people flee from the region is they fled from the war before and today they uh, flee because of the political situation, because they are in a helpless situation. Um, they are suffering from play carried on on political and diplomatic levels without them having to take any effect. And uh, just by the EU discussing the processes of joining the, um, of joining the community, it's clear that this is not taken serious by everyone. The negotiations are not negotiations. They don't deserve to be called that. So they don't want to have democratization. They don't want to look at the history they want to stay this way it is, and they want to keep the status quo is, and Europe is taking part, and that is really the mess in this situation. Nothing, nothing has changed on the political level at all. It is still the stakeholders that uh, show their disapproval, uh, but that point to the nationalists, but uh, still, uh, this is already happening within the European Union. But in the end, concrete, these nationalists, and that is really what we have. We are having so-called non-papers that uh, are distributed. And we exactly know the Yugoslavian crisis and uh, 
were created by these non-papers. Nobody wants to know about these. And now another non-paper appears and we discuss about uh, this rubbish without making clear this is not going to happen with us. But this is not enough. We have to act. Bosnia and Herzegovina has, and the Western Balkan simply has to, is a lachmus test for the credibility of the European Union and the future of democracy within Europe. And that is what I'd like to close with. I thank you very much for this film. It opens many, many questions, pulling them up from the background, putting them forward in the limelight, uh, asking whether the international community tolerated this. Was it a coincidence? I think we have to look at history here on the political side and on the European side and the international side. Also, there's a lot of questions here. Thank you. Well, and uh, Mr. Juratovic just made it very clear. It was clear as early as in 1992 what it would boil down to in Bosnia Herzegovina. The ethnic cleansings, it was already known where it leads. Mr. Zaratin, Mr. Mladic um, got a life sentences, a sentence recently not just because of charges because on charges of genocide what is sam um, the thrust for the eu when it comes to the responsibility that europe has well to put it a bit bluntly I would say for the Greens, Srebrenica was at the beginning of the way of uh, the um, Bielefeld Party um, Convention, where military operations in Serbia um, were approved by my party. And vis-a-vis -vis the uh, survivors shortly after the genocide, at a trip um, by undertaken by many um, members of the Green Party. Many pacifists uh, changed their mind and it is one of the thoughts, and at least for my party and also for the German left in general, the political <coughs> left, the dying was, um, uh, well, at least a catalyst. I'm sure that if something became visible today, a different pressure group would be in the German Bundestag that would organize protest and hopefully a harder line of action. The second item is that it is so important to commemorate the victims. Well, um, history is done via reconstruction, but there is no better way of compassion towards the victims and the survivors and their loved ones, all of them. It's nothing you can misuse or abuse if you do it unilaterally. And this film shows why Srebrenica is special, not uh, in comparison with 2020, but with um, major genocides of the scene where the young soldier of Republika Srebska um, greets his teacher and asks for the young son, specifically the young son that she is so worried about, and the buses, the buses with the men, and the buses with the women, these scenes that are very close to what actually happened demonstrate that it was not just a ma mass murder or only an um, expulsion but it is something that hits you very deeply, something something true, something nasty, something I can't explain in words. And Adelaide Würfel, I also thought, well, Mladic has been convicted and I see the bus, the bus where he tells the women, 
Here we are. Uh, should he not survive the scene, would it have been more justice? I kept thinking like um, a Den Haag conviction is the justice that we can hope to achieve. But nonetheless, this um, um, international tribunal that is to bring about justice and reconciliation, but that has uh, produced such a lot of failure on the ground in the region, it has not unfolded the effect that we were hoping to get. So this film gives rise to the question, is that justice that Mladic is as bold as he was when he was standing in front of the bus that he stands in court and feels he's a cool guy so the rage that you were talking about, that was triggered within me. I think the EU is in a situation or um, it is able to fail, yes, but not to that degree. I think we would have the power to stop such people. And we have learned that we should have used violence and we should have intervened earlier. In Ukraine in 2014 and 15, the EU was in a position to ensure um, that, you know, at the Black Sea and Mariupol, but in Srebrenica, apparently um, the um, outcome of the war was um, wanted in a way, and one hoped that people wouldn't be hurt. Okay. I don't know the individuals here. Yeah, I am um, nonetheless after me, we will hear the high representative. Well, those responsible on the ground, of course, um, used or hid behind the inability and incompetence of the UN, and they were not willing to um, really risk their own lives, not vis-a-vis -vis Mladic either, and that's how they were treated. If um, you make an appearance as an international community, um, you should send people who also have a firm character vis-a-vis -vis such people. And and I believe, and the way I know him, I think we selected the right one. But now you will ask him a question, Adelheid. Thank you, Manuel, for these words. Um, High Representative Christian Schmidt, you will come to Sarajevo and uh, assume that office. And people like me, see it time and again, like if you go for a walk and suddenly you see a house of a large picture is uh, worshipped on the wall and we've seen graffitis where uh, they glorify him. Well, it has not yet been achieved that uh, the facts in Bosnia are cherished, but uh, on the contrary, the facts are denied. You as a um, high representative will have to put um, emphasis on that. Well, 20 years on, um, can you give us your view? Thank you very much, Mrs. Wölfel and um, dear colleagues, Ms. Spanich. Of course, uh, you are hitting a nerve here. And if I look in the audience, I am one of uh, the persons who were a member of parliament at uh, that difficult age. And Lubavitcher is a film that I have also seen recently based on my personal experience and based on the discussions in the um, Bundestag with Christian Schwarz Schilling. And um, well, uh, he was one of the young wild ones, which he no longer is, of course, Helmut Kohl. I, uh, they met at a point, and it was a very emotional, but very interesting nonetheless, when it came to the rapes of Bosnian women. And I don't know whether it is written in the history books, but um, 
Helmut Kohl's wife um, had a similar experience in East Prussia at the end of the Second World War. And um, this was taken very seriously indeed. Nonetheless, the political community had a very hard time organizing itself uh, in admitting that you had to look into this and get active. Older, not just colleagues, but older citizens uh, contacted me and without email, it didn't exist, but they wrote to me and they said, oh, stop it. We went down there once and we should never go there again. So um, it's about the spirit with which you go there. And thus I can only confirm what my colleague, Mr. Zarazin said, this kind of situation should not be dealt uh, with restraint. It, there was a lack of clarity everywhere. Germany took a long time, and I can only talk on my own behalf, um, but it took long to recognize that it was not a follow-up organization after Tito's death and the question of who would head this uh, loose federation of state, but they were political forces and um, maybe built up over the years. Sometimes you feel that it built up even over a longer period of time. And when um, I read the book, uh, The Bridge Across the Drina, and a lot more has to be done or should have been done and nothing was done. I remember 1992, the referendum of um, the independence in Bosnia where we were election observers in Sarajevo. And when the last point, the boycott of the elections from the part of the Serbs and the skirmishes that started and they um, expanded. We didn't react, we didn't take them seriously. We somehow felt that self-determination is one thing and now we've had the downcoming of the wall and now everything will be good. And, you know, the end of history and everything will be uh, great, Fujiyama. And, well, the massive aggression that um, we saw in your film, Miss Svanic, and this pad with cynicism. So from the outside, um, it can certainly not be solved by means of verbal conviction. But as somebody who um, um, the Nuremberg Institute, I, I come from Franconia, from that region, and for us, uh, you know, the Nuremberg Childs and the Nuremberg Principles of the United Nations that uh, also determined the um, agenda and this international um, um, enforcement of law would be established, but it deals with a disaster that happened. So even the strongest scene in your film, for, to me personally, is the scene where we see the return not only of the widows that are in such a terrible state, but a, um, a woman who has pride and she knows that it's important to go to school. So the children dancing on stage that are ethnically not entirely separated that's a question that I'm asking to myself also in my capacity. If I am, you know, part of uh, the generation, you know, there are generations of perpetrators and victims, okay? So if I am from that generation, can we accept that such 
uh, crimes are denied or is it acceptable that students residences are named after Radovan Karacic, as we witnessed recently, then the international community and the European Union needs to stand closely together and um, show their profile. The art will be to show that it is not anti-Serbian and not anti-Croatian. You know, I have seen such accusations, you know, where um, certain um, pieces of information were treated like that, but individualism has to be fostered, but also the responsibility of those responsible, that has to be the basis. In abstract terms, it is easy, but it's easier said than done. I'm a bit shocked at um, what we see as justifications and I'm German and I was born in 1957. So we were the ones who asked questions like, where were you at that time? And in my capacity as um, defense minister, I had to rename certain things, you know, um, things were not named after Radovan Karacic, but generals from the Second World War were honored. And this uh, took well until the 90s, until this was corrected and rectified well. And it's also in Germany uh, that without the Americans and without Fritz Bauer and Hannah Arendt, we would not have got that far. And um, our own self-image that is terrible, especially if a generation refuses everything. And like um, when dealing with the generation that keeps saying, you don't know anything, it was different. This leads me to the last picture. So um, don't um, you know save the ones who are responsible and not just in terms of ownership, but also with international means, a measure has to be fulfilled that uh, deals with the things you show in your film. And as far as I can tell, until, you know, like um, when Mladic enters Srebrenica and his behavior, and what should we do with the children? You know, is it possible that the schools are separate in a way that the aggression and the aversion against the other is continued? And here again, as somebody who is very active in the Czech Republic, and this for 30 years now, with textbooks you can achieve a lot many positive things but it was Václav Havel who answered that question in the Czech Republic and uh, working with those who were expelled well that's a different story but anyway that is my personal version Miss uh, Wölfe there was a statesman who was in um, uh, Helmut Schmidt who said, uh, if you have visions, you should go to hospital, but not into politics. Well, a vision, my vision is that in the next generation, we will have a different view and enable a different view. We can't go it alone, but uh, despite the vision, we should know, uh, nonetheless not forget the day-to-day -day business and achieve a situation where you can't answer things the simple way. There are no simple answers. And there are people who exactly know what should happen. But I, at the moment, know what went wrong. But I think with a principal orientation is uh, what you need. 
And what you show in your film, you know, where people are shot and um, without, um, you know, people being shot is something that we don't want to admit. I hear it from the German parliament. Why did I join politics? People ask, well, because a minimum level of values has to be um, transported in politics. It doesn't work every minute, but it is possible in principle. And, you know, this film should be seen and watched on a broad basis. When I left a political meeting and I met somebody who I don't know, but an MP, and he said, um, are you looking for a driver for Sarajevo? I'm from Sarajevo. I said, where are you from? Well, I'm a Bosnian Serb from Srpska. And we had an interesting conversation and he said, Mr. Schmidt, please work for the fact that we look at each other in a way that the other one is no worse than yourself. And your film, really, it's the second film that is really impressive and should be seen by as many people as possible and in Srapska and elsewhere, um, not for public education, but nonetheless. Thank you very much. And now I'd like to ask Ms. Spanich to uh, comment on what has been said and also uh, give you a question. The things that happen in Bosnia-Herzegovina or Srebrenica are not very anchored in the German, uh, in the European history consciousness. And why is that the case? And can we do something about this? And what do you think about the denial topic? You are an activist as well. Maybe you have a political suggestion on how to address this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I noticed while showing the film uh, that not many Europeans know about Srebrenica. Of course, educated people do, but uh, we had, we've been showing rough cuts uh, because my editor is Polish in his academy. Out of 16 Polish students, you know, 23 years old, 10 never heard of Srebrenica and six heard that something happened but couldn't say who and what. I noticed when I was um, in Berlin at the European Film Academy, uh, the president said, yeah, we are, you know, 70 years living in peace, no killings, Europe is fantastic. And I didn't want to spoil this great um, um, energy, but I came to her later and I said, uh, did you hear that 100,000 people got killed, 2 million expelled and one country was completely burned down? And she didn't do it because she's mean, you know, she was really shocked. Uh, this is not part of um, European consciousness. Is, is it because Bosnians are considered like others? And that's for me the biggest problem that Bosnians are not considered um, like, like Europeans. And I will come to the solution through, through this. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm directress. I always have to have vision and I always have to materialize this vision and make solution. When people told me you can't make film about genocide, especially, you know, in Bosnia where we produced one film per year, which is like 1 million euro. And we made this film, you know, for 4 million, which is for Bosnia, huge budget. And everybody said it's not possible. And we had so many political obstacles. You know, nobody wanted to give us tanks from the Ministry of Defense. Dodik had to sign it. But we managed. So, you know, I believe in, in things that, uh, that are possible to do. Um, it can, you know, this European uh, conscious can be changed. Uh, we, we need to talk about film uh, uh, through films, through different events, uh, through school books. I'm happy that in Germany, a uh, distributor wants to show it to school kids. So I, I think this is really, really great. Film will start in whole Europe tomorrow. I'm traveling to Austria. It starts in um, Netherlands. They really appreciate the film. So I, I think these are small moves. 
um, talking about solution because I'm very optimistic person, even if I'm living in this, you know, madness of, of Bosnia and I'm living in it since age of 17, you know, war started and, uh, um, you know, sometimes I come to Berlin just to rest a little bit and see stuff from a distance because I'm so fed up with this. You know, when you have obstacle and it's interesting, you fight for it. But when it's so boring, like these three nations, you, I think, oh, I want other challenge. This is so boring. But look, and you will laugh now, but if Bosnia is accepted in EU, 90% of things will change. 90% people will be able to travel, to see other stuff, to hang out with others, to find jobs, to circulate. And, you know, it's solution for many things. And this, um, this war lords that are still, there's, uh, that are still keeping Bosnia under, you know, um, um, we, we are hostages of them. Uh, and we are hostages of this uh, constitutive uh, We are hostages. We, we will be released from the prison. And Europe can also show that is not EU can show that it's not against Muslims. Because I'm sorry to say, uh, EU didn't react in Bosnia. If we were Christians, you know, there will be nothing like this uh, uh, massacres and, and genocide. I'm sorry to say, but it is true. So accept Bosnia and EU as soon as possible. Uh, and you will also change many things in Europe because letting stuff that happened in Bosnia encouraged your own right wings. 26 years ago, it was not possible in Europe to have fascists in the government and, and have uh, you know, open fascists. Of course, we always have fascists uh, are everywhere. But you know, it, it, it is changing your, you know, the, the, the way your, your, how should I say, the mild approach towards fascists is changing Europe as well. So I know you are laughing, but please think about it seriously, because I think this will be absolutely radical and uh, revolutionary move and it would solve a lot of things, you know, changing name of the streets, is it Karadzic, is it not, it's a very low level. Let's really make a big gesture, big gesture from, from, from Europe. Uh, also, I would, I wish, you know, that, that we break these old narratives uh, uh, and, and the perspective towards Balkans, because I think they are old fashioned, they are not functioning. You know, nations are narratives, it's a, it's invention. Um, all these things, you know, I'm Bosnian Herzegovinian, uh, which means I cannot be elected in my country. I am considered others in my country. I have no rights in my country. Can you imagine, you know, that I can't do, I don't have the same rights like my colleague who, who is just saying that he's Muslim or Serb or whatever. So this is nonsense. We also have solution for that. Um, it, um, it, there is a plan which is uh, done by, uh, I'm sorry, now my, my brain stopped, um, Bodo Weber, um, a, a German guy with the help of Americans, and he um, suggested a new, I mean, this organization suggested a new way of uh, reconstructing Bosnia. Because Bosnia is a size, according, I mean, when you see how much people live there, it's Berlin. It's the size of Berlin, even less. And we have, uh, you know, 12 ministry of culture. I have to talk to 12 people in order to do something. It's madness. And these people are paid to tell me that we don't have budget for films. This is insane. I'm not talking, you know, from nation and who has more rights. I have no rights in my country, so I don't care who has more rights. I don't have anything. So this is absolute nonsense from economic point of view, from logical point of view. And that could be also totally released, you know, this kind of stuff if we are in EU and before Serbia. <laughs> Thank you, thank, thank you very much, for, uh, Frau Spanic, for this... Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Spanic, may, may just, for this... May, uh... may I just add one little thing? I'm so sorry. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you tell me uh, we are more corrupted, I tell you we are in the kindergarten compared to corruption in 
Italy, even Germany, whatever. I'm reading stuff. So uh, if you say we are more mafia, you know, let's let's be honest. I mean, we have you have Italy in you. So we are not special in anything. We can be totally accepted. And this old narratives of oh, you should do it by yourself is totally not true because it was. EU and UN who didn't allow us to defend ourselves. Don't forget, we had four years um, embargo on weapons. We were not allowed to defend ourselves. And now you tell us, yeah, yeah, do it yourself. This is total nonsense. And also big uh, nonsense for me is this narrative that uh, we hated each other for 500 years or whatever. I tell you, we don't hate each other you know before the war and even now as many as much as some countries hate each other in eu but really this is all uh, narrative to stop people from doing something this is really doesn't work this we know that war is business war is profit and these people who are running bosnia now they are war profiteers who want to keep status quo they are talking about EU thinking it will never, never happen. Thank you, thank you very much, Frau Spanic. Leider läuft uns die Zeit davon, deswegen würde ich jetzt... Thank you very much. Um, unfortunately, we're running out of time, so I'd like to ask everyone for a very short closing statement. Um, should we show this film in Germany, in the schools, to generate more understanding of the history in Southeast Europe? Absolutely, yes. I'm someone who uh, looks at the European uh, Union with concern. Uh, if we look at the autocracies that we see here, I fear that if we do not develop a democratic consciousness and are aware of the risks that we are looking at here, what the autocrats are doing, then we will see the balkanization of Europe. If we want to stop this, we will have to show the adolescent that this kind of thing is not a history from 100 years or whatever ago, but it is now. Thank you, Mr. Jovatovic. Manuel, this is the history of all of us. And this idea of nationalists that we have ethical cleansed areas or states are not over, they are everywhere in Europe. What could be the main political lesson learned from this film? Well, that you stand up for your own values and that there is no differentiation in values between anyone. The Dutch UN soldier, his love life is not that more worth than that of anybody else. And of, it's of course difficult. That's always been one of the points that all the uh, members of the parliaments that have um, decided on uh, deploying the Bundeswehr, there's no better or worse life. Every life is worth the same. Every person, every human being has the same right to live and fight for life. Um, Mr. Schmidt, what, as, what you can do, what can you do as a high representative uh, to uh condemn this please be short in your answer thank you um uh, uh i see possibilities vanishing um on a legal basis doing things that it's not going to be possible we have to dig deeper and we have to invest more and this can only be done um, with the high commissary and uh, with the EU and uh, also with NGOs, but it has to be, if we have so many ministries in Bosnia, they have to take care of this. And if they don't do it, others have to, to make sure that the young people have a perspective to stay in the country. And that also includes knowledge of the history that may um, sound tough, but I'll make my contribution to this. And it's not great fun every day, but it's work that needs to be done. Thank you very, very much. I'd like to thank everybody for their competitions, for the audience, for watching. I hope this film will serve. And I'm sure if it is watched, it will serve 
to show the history of these people, of the survivors that have to live with every day and uh, also today, and that we uh, stand by their side in solidarity as Europeans, because as long as we don't do that, uh, we don't have enough of a European consciousness. You can watch the film now. Uh, the link has been posted in the question and answer session. Um, you've got the password. And I'd like to thank you very much for your attention and taking part. And I wish you a wonderful evening. Thank you and goodbye.